There is no denying that the real estate market is red hot right now. Prices have been rising in B.C. with no end in sight. But one market watcher thinks the bubble is going to burst. In fact, he's banking on it. Mark Cahotis used to run one of the largest hedge funds on Wall Street. He specialized as a short seller. Now he's eyeing the Canadian housing market. Good morning, Mark. How's it going, Randine? I'm good, thank you. I really want people uh, to understand this. So explain to me, first of all, what short selling is. Uh, short selling in stocks is basically you borrow shares that other people own and you sell them. It's essentially the equivalent of if I was in the cattle business and I thought the price of cows were going to go down, I would sell all my cows. I would borrow some of your cows. I would sell them with the promise to buy them back and return them to you one day. And if they went down, I would make. And if they went up and I got tired of my position, I would lose. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing with stocks. But to make it clear, I have no uh, bet or short position on in the Vancouver market. I'm short Home Capital Group, which is symbol HCG in Toronto, on the Canadian housing market. And Home cap has originated and has fessed to originating 1.9 billion of fraudulent mortgages. So that's my play. And on the Vancouver market, it's essentially a this is a public service thing because I'm sick and tired of people being taken advantage of. And when I feel strongly about something, I've learned that I'm best to speak out rather than keep it to myself. Okay, so so let's let's stick with BC then. Um, you think that that the bubble out here is incredibly high and it's going to burst. Yes, I think it's a money laundering induced market where the local politicians or the B.C. liberals are kept or in cahoots with the real estate brokers, developers, lawyers, that angle. And they have sought Chinese money to keep the market propped up and it won't last. I mean, China has capital controls on and Vancouver has become the money laundering mecca of either the world or North America and something is going to change and change drastically. Well, it, it could potentially last if our government doesn't do anything about it, could it not? Well, if your government doesn't do anything, I think they're going to be voted out. Um, I think I have a pretty good handle on how upset and pissed off people are. There have been some great articles written by Sam Cooper and Kathy Tomlinson about money laundering and what's gone on. You know, dead bodies in trunks, dead bodies in houses. There's stories of a Chinese college student buying a $31 million uh, property in Vancouver. And when asked what her father does for a living, she couldn't even answer it. I mean, this is this is sheer insanity. And what's going on is you're pricing local hardworking people out of the market. And as I've said before, the housing market in Vancouver resembles the Vancouver Stock Exchange and penny stocks many years ago. And that did not end well at all. You, uh, Mike DeYoung, our finance minister, um basically said the other day on a local radio station, CKNW, that because there's still such a demand that we still need to keep buying and prices will st continue to go up. He says that the Chinese real estate market, they still just don't know what the numbers are, so they can't make a move yet. Uh, he doesn't believe we're in a bubble. The provincial government doesn't believe we're, we're in a bubble. Well, he's full of more crap than a Christmas turkey, and the, the government is in on it. And Christy Clark has taken, I mean, the market is ridiculously high, and Christy Clark goes and takes real estate people over to China. They issue something called Panda Bonds, which is one of the biggest scams I've ever seen. And they have the records. They just don't want people to really know, or they don't want people to know the truth. So one of my, you know, if there is a problem, I mean, there's a lot of problems in the world, but I have solutions to fix what the issues are but people the politicians in your neck of the woods do not want to take the medicine because their livelihood depends on this and the problem is they were elected by the people to work for the people and they're just not doing their jobs and and similar setups happened in the united states in 2008 
and I was involved in it, and I vowed that if I ever saw it again, I'd speak out. And I'm just, you know, frankly, you guys should be just sick of what's going on, and you should throw these people out or you, elect some, someone who will work for you. In 2008, though, you were talking about the U.S. housing market. That was the subprime market. That's not the uh -huh. case here in British Columbia. Well, sure. Well, I mean, let's let's talk reality here. The average family makes about $80,000 a year. And let's, even if we double that, there is an affordability problem uh, to begin with. And what's going on is, is people who buy or participate in the market are going to become, you know, debt servants for the rest of their life. Whoever loans money to anyone fully expects to be paid back. And when this market does uh, tank, collapse, or whatever, correct, uh, people will lose a generation of savings and or equity and be debt slaves for a long period of time. So it is, it is essentially subprime in my mind, and it's fueled by a money laundering bubble that politicians don't want to end. And I'm not a political guy. I, I, I could really care less who's in power, but they do need to work for the people to get this thing right. I do have one last question for you, because what you're saying is going to cause a lot of controversy and a lot of discussion here today, I'm sure, which is absolutely a good thing where our real estate market is concerned, mm -hmm. because we love talking real estate in this province. But when do you think the bubble is going to burst? And by how much? You're talking about um, eradicating a, a generation of real estate uh, for people. Mm -hmm. But how much is it going to burst, and, and who's it going to affect? Well, I think the market's going to go down somewhere between 50 and 80 percent. It's going to affect everyone, but it's going to uh, cripple people who are highly leveraged. When, when, when someone says when, I mean, let's, let's be real. China has capital controls on. China does not want what's going on in YVR and in Canada happening. They want the money to stay in China. I mean, what's going on is illegal, and criminals are taking their money from China illegally and putting it into Canadian housing, specifically Vancouver. So when's it going to happen? I don't know. All the signs are there. But, but people who live and work locally deserve better. When you're priced out of the market, it's sort of a blight on business. It's hard to hire people. It's hard to afford to live there. Uh, costs go up. And it's, it's just not good. So when? It could happen in a week, a month. It could happen in another year. But at some point, bubbles burst. And, and to say, you know, it's not a supply and demand thing. It's a follow the money. It's a money laundering vehicle, and it needs to stop. And again, there's, there's solutions out there to make this happen. All right, Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. But we do appreciate your time, and maybe we can talk to you again, the finance minister coming out with hard, specific numbers about the money coming in from Asia next week, so we can get your take on it then. Sure. Mark Cahotis, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mark Cahotis was a hedge fund manager uh, specializing in short stocks, one of the biggest, most successful hedge fund managers in the U.S. about a decade ago.